Hello everybody, this is Abby Normal and welcome to Chess of Blades, a free demo I found on Itch.io. It is a Yaoi game and it'll be play part of the LGTBL. It would help if I could get the word out. LGBTQ series that I'm doing. But uh, it looked really interesting and the artwork looks beautiful. And listen to that music. It's quiet at the moment. Hang on, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Listen to that. Isn't that pretty? That's pretty. I like it. And you'll have to forgive me if you hear me like blowing my nose and like just bugging out because my ears block as well as my nose. The entire right side of my face is blocked. I'm gonna blame the weather because it's raining, but let's get straight into it. You don't wanna hear this, you just wanna see some boys and boy. Boys and boy? Boys and boy. Boys and boy. Boys, boys. Calm down. My hair is perfect, it has to be. I spent four hours grooming myself earlier. Oh gods. Gods help me. Now isn't the time to get stage right. Come on, pull yourself together. <coughs> I take great pleasure in presenting our next guest. Do you? Straighten up. Look presentable. Smile. The sole heir of our beloved Lord and Lady Varys. That's me. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Here it comes. Rivian Varison. That's my name, Rivian, apparently. Damn it. <laughs> I bet they're going to laugh at my hair. Your hair looks fine. You look like most anime boys I've seen. It's fine. Well, don't want to really laugh. See the bloody puffed up nobles. Oh, he's so cute. I love that. <laughs> Why can't you be an upstanding son like that? You're a shame to this family. Wow, okay. What a charming young man! You must introduce yourself to him after this, Violetta. He's Varison's boy. Hmm, I should speak with him later. Oh, will you now? Smile, smile. Pretend you want to be here. Oh no, this is bad. Where do I go now that I'm here? There's no protocol for this, is there? Mingle! Mingle! Just mingle! Calm yourself! Ah, oh, I just want to go home. <laughs> Sir, I have been requested to bring you upstairs when you arrive. Oh, alright then. <laughs> oh. Sebastian? A sharply dressed man, a servant, suddenly approaches my side, bending forward slightly in a bow. Are I you sure you have the uh, right person? Well, I'm doing the wrong voice for you, aren't I? Yes, sir. You are Sir Rivian, are you not? Uh, yeah. I give him a suspicious nod. Am I about to be wheedled into some marriage proposal? <gasps> Excellent. This way, sir. I... Right. I mean, right, right, yes. <laughs> Suddenly I just speak really commonly like, I, I got ya. I fall into step behind the well-dressed servant, gazing all around me as I go. All around me are familiar places. It's even more spectacular than I thought it'd be. So many people in so many lavish outfits. The cost of that woman's dress probably outweighs our whole kingdom's treasury. Also, is it just my imagination or are people staring at me? It's because I'm beautiful. Is my hair that bad? I really thought I'd done it properly. Your hair's fine! We've been this. introduce yourself later, darling. Darling. Miss Piggy? I love that voice, that was amazing. Thanks, but I'll have to pass. Here Hi. we are, sir. Oh, okay. Right. The servant stops after we ascend the stairs leading to the overlooking balcony, turning around to face me with another bow. I appreciate it, but, um, why did you take me here again? I was gonna make a Romeo and Juliet joke, but it's stupid. <sighs> As the butler opens his mouth to reply, Riv! Over here! Uh. <gasps> huh? Is that whose voice I think it is? No, that's impossible. The gentleman who requested you is over there, sir. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> are, are we going to yell at each other from the balconies? Because that would be hilarious. All the guests just look up and it's like, Oh my god, I haven't seen you in ages! I haven't seen you too! And it's like... Are they ever going to, like, you know, 
go onto the same balcony and talk like normal people? No, they're just going to shout at each other. All right, all right, yes. After his concisely polite words, the servant turns and elegantly descends the staircase once more. But before I can turn back around, a firm tug pulls at my arm. Rivian! I know you remember me. It's only been four years. <laughs> I can't remember someone I met four days ago. <laughs> four years. The familiar face of an energetic young man appears in front of me. Oh, I remember you all right, Arden. Can't you look a little happier to see your old friend? You have the expression of a man at a funeral, not at a dance. I mean, all right. With a sulky frown, he nudges, he nudges my shoulder with a hand. Please. I'd forgotten that this man doesn't know the phrase personal space. Touch me. <laughs> How did you know I'd be here? No. More importantly, why are you here? Weren't you serving in the King's Army? Mm, King's Army, hey? Oh, wait, no. Oh, that. Yeah, well, there are a few pubs called the King's Army, but there's also ones called the King's Arms, which is what I was thinking of. So when someone's like, hey, where are you? When you're like calling them on the phone, they can be like, oh, I'm, I'm just in the King's Arms, and they're like, oh, what? I was, yes, until I was promoted to serving in his royal guard. I bet he wanted you in his royal guard. What? His over-enthusiasm incites in me a strong desire to punch him. <laughs> you only got the job because your father's a joke, you bastard. Mm, I'm so proud of you. Shouldn't you be on duty rather than frolicking around then? He doesn't need his whole force for a week-long retreat, you know. I was given permission to attend as a guest. Yeah. Oh, 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 I, I forgot this, t I'm just going to speak posh the whole way through until I get to like the right bit when I'm like, I don't go, oh right, I'm just going to go, I, I forgot that this damn celebration lasts five whole days. How am I going to make it back alive? Did Lord and Lady Varison not come with you? You look a little lost and alone. Piss off! I'm just not used to being around so many noisy people at once. That's all. Oh, it's a perfect piss off. Piss off! The last thing I want him to know is that it's the first grand event I've attended by myself. I never hear the end of his ridiculous teasing. Going back to my previous question, how on earth did you know that I'd be coming to the party? Party? You're the new centre of attention, that's why. Oh, is it my hair? Everyone I... loved and respected your father so much when he worked as the king's chief general and strategist. It's only natural his newly marriageable son catches the public eye. Hmm. Damn it. He winks and gives me a pointed nudge. It's people like you who make me want to wear spikes on my clothing, Arden. Ah, oh, good, I thought I was the only one who ever done that. I wore spikes on a collar throughout, like, my... Like, high school for you guys, but it was just normal secondary school for me. I wore it all the way through, because whenever someone came near me, I was like, if you come near me, I'm going to spike you with this collar. And the spikes were like an inch thick each, and I was just like, yeah. Where are we going? As we talk, I notice the crowd is starting to gravita uh, gravitate towards the large ballroom doors in the main floor below. I guess it means it's about time for that. Ugh. <coughs> No, that, that was a burp. I, I didn't just go, oh, I was like, that was, ugh. The thought makes me feel slightly nauseated and apparently full of wind. In that case, I should extract myself before I get dragged into anything. Don't dance with me. Well, there'll be plenty of time for us to catch up later. In the meantime, where are they keeping the wine? In the winery. Oh, well, it's over by the terrace doors. But the dancing's about to start, you know. Aren't you coming? No. Can I save? Oh, I can save. Good. Dancing. How horrific. Maybe some other time. Mm. Oh, yeah. Maybe some other time. Maybe we should just let him down gently. Ugh. I grimace, swallowing the vehement refusal I want to offer as a reply. Arda looks so pleadingly expectant that even my frigid heart is incapable of shutting him down so merciless, 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 merciless. The idea of... Uh, can I just say, my S's are very, very complicated. They always have been. So if it, there's a lot of S's, I'm like... The idea of dancing, however, makes my stomach turn more than Arden's puppy dog eyes can move me. I, uh, you know, still a little <laughs> sore from the carriage ride and all that. Some other time, perhaps. I wish you the best of oh, luck, sorry. though. Tear up that ballroom floor in my honour. Right. Riv, wait! Gotta go! Gotta go fast! Oh, 
Before he can grab hold of my arm again, I quickly retreat and make a beeline for the wine table. But I soon get immersed in the crowd heading in the opposite direction and a sea of lacy dresses surrounds me in a fury of fluttering. Bloody hell, how can there be so many people in one place? It's called a party! Yoo-hoo! Come dance with me, darling. Miss Piggy? <sighs> uh, I already have a date, sorry. Sorry! <laughs> Somehow I managed to evade the overly aggressive woman from earlier, her lips twisting into a sour pout after I hastily decline. The crowd thins out as most of them head down to the grand staircase, I, and I finally worm my way over to the terrace doors. By the way, whoever is voice acting as the mis as the woman who I keep referring to as Miss Piggy, that's not an insult, that's like the best voice anyone could ever have. And if it's a man doing it, wow, because that is pretty amazing. Whew. Oh, but I wouldn't give to be at home right now, curled in my warm bed with a book. Ah, books. I still can't believe mother and father sent me all the way out here by myself. I know we don't do well at parties, they send me to a five night extravaganza of extravagance. That's the best thing to ever describe an event. Oh, what is this? It looks, it's an extravaganza of extravagance. It's excellent. Cool, cool parents. They sent me to a party. You're here Ugh. for me, my sweet ambrosia. Just like glugging away at the wine bottle, just like. <laughs> Sighing gratefully, I pick up a glass that's already filled with dark red liquid. I was never allowed to drink much when I attended balls with my family, so I'll be damned if I don't make the most of this. I'ma get pissed. Oh, it's dark and spooky. The grand celebration of the king's birthday. It was a full week of parties, dancing games. I even heard there's a festival. Out here in the mountains, the royal families were treated as more of a miniature town than anything. There's shops, market stalls, temporary houses, and a jousting arena, all set up for this occasion alone. <coughs> Sorry. And of course, there's the picturesque castle we're in right now. Only a fraction of the size of the actual castle in the capital city, but still magnificent. Oh, God. Rich people. Ugh. Still, it took five days to travel here by carriage. Why the hell does it have to be so remote? I feel like I'm in kind of secluded prison or something, even if it's admittedly a lavish one. I mean, aren't all big houses prisons in their own way? If you, you know, you have to live in the house and you have to stay behind barred windows and be a caged bird. Oh my god! Oh god, it's go oh, I'm going depressing. No, no, don't do it. So depressing. What have I gotten myself into? It's a party, Rivian! Taking a long drink of my- <coughs> Speaking of which, hang on. <coughs> there we go, I have to take a drink. Taking a long drink of my saving grace, I head over to the balcony railing to gaze down at the empty, emptied floor below. It looks a lot different now that almost all the guests have gone into the ballroom. I can hear the muffled sound of music from behind the green, green doors. The green doors? I think I'll just make myself inconspicuous until we're shown to our rooms and maybe just hide under the covers for the next few days. Well, just claim that you're sick. Just be like, I'm so sorry, I, I can't join you all today. I have this terrible migraine and then be like sick the whole way through. Request books. Uh, uh. Is someone whispering? I turn my head sharply to search the, for the source of the noise, but I can't see anyone. Behind the curtains. Are they on the terrace? I whirl around in an attempt to catch the whisperers off guard, but no one's there. <laughs> it's a ghost! Probably just some young couple exchanging dirty lines under their breath. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, your hair looks nice tonight. No, your hair looks nice tonight, yeah? Yeah? Guess what? Sh show us your ankles. <gasps> here, show us your ankles. No, no, you mustn't. I mustn't. Hush, we someone will hear us. I mean, I wish they weren't acting so eerily stealthy about it, though. <laughs> Is something the matter, sir? Uh, ah! Yeah. Ah! Yeah. We both jumped. The servant suddenly standing behind and beside me again. Speaking of eerily stealthy, how did he sneak up like that? I'm, I swear butlers are all trained in the art of sneakery. <clears throat> no, nothing's the matter. <laughs> Just enjoying some private time with my beau. Are you talking about your wine? I motioned to my wine. Yep, and after a firm nod, he sounded like my mother. Oh. May I ask if you managed to meet with Sir Arden? He was very excited about seeing you. Mm. Ah, uh, yes. I met up with him, all right. Mm -hmm. If I may be so bold, you do not seem overly thrilled with the prospect of his company. I mean, what can I say other than... <sighs> I love you. No. <laughs> 
passing my lips hesitantly, I tap a fingernail against the glass in my hand. It's a little more complicated than that, but I don't particularly want to discuss the details. Of course. I apologize for intruding on your private affairs. However, Sir Arden pulled me aside again and requested you join him in the ballroom. Oh, fine. I'll let him touch my butt. Ugh. Well, I'm not joining him in the damn ballroom. He can find someone else to bother. Oh, the vehemency of my reply makes the servant blink in surprise, and I immediately feel a little sheepish for my outburst. Well, his majesty at least would not wish you to dance if you did not want to. I am certain. Mm, I clear my throat, nodding a little awkwardly in reply. How long does the dance last, out of curiosity? Well, this is already the second dance of the night, my lord. His Majesty enjoys letting his noble guests have time to mingle and refresh themselves in between. I'm refreshing myself right now! Woo! Party up in here! The schedule of festivities for the remaining day shall be announced after this dance, I believe. Hi. The schedule, huh? I suppose I should be present to hear that at least. Mm-hmm. My musings are rewarded with a nod of agreement by the servant. What's your name, anyway? This is already the second time I've seen you, and I'm sure it won't be the last time if I'm here for five days. Yeah, if your name's Sebastian, I'm losing my shit. Looking a little pleasantly surprised at my question, the man tilts his head slightly. Guests do not usually inquire after the names of servants, but... I am called Silas, sir. That's good, at least it's not Sebastian. Well, Silas, any way I might be able to convince you to lead me to my room after the schedule announcement? <laughs> I offer him a most winning smile. <laughs> so, yes. Don't turn me down! I'll, I'll just drink myself. Uh, no, no, oh. I didn't mean anything like that. I just wanted to turn any... Uh. Well, regardless of your intention, sir... I am not supposed to leave the main hall until instructed. Oh, that hurts. Shot for the heart, and you're to blame. You give love for that day. <laughs> okay. Fine. Fine, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. You never fail to impress with your social skills, Rivian. Like a greased elephant skating on ice. Yeah. I just had six seconds to imagine that, and I was like, nice. Silas! But before I can skulk away to the ballroom, tired by shame, a high pitched voice suddenly peals in the air. Oh, you're adorable! A moment later, a little girl comes running up beside Silas. Ah! She's probably not older than ten and cute as a button, but I can tell from her outfit that she's not a nobleman's child. Something about her reminds me of someone, but I can't put my finger on who. Is it Hello, him? Hello, Hazel. Is something the matter? I don't like staying in the kitchens by myself. Hmm. It's so dark. And I always feel like someone's watching me. Um, it's just the rats, honey. It's alright. Clinging onto Silas's sleeve, she turns her large eyes in my direction. I can't blame you. Ever since I almost caught on fire during a visit to Armana's cook, I never liked kitchens either. That's uh, that's almost as bad as me saying the rats thing. It's like, yeah, I know how you feel. Like, I nearly died in the kitchen once. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you laugh. She giggles a little, rocking on her toes. Oh. Well, at least I can make conversation with little girls. <laughs> that, well, that, that could be taken out of context easily. Please don't call the police. Wait, that's not something to be- YES, EXACTLY! That's not something to be proud of! No, it's really not! Imagine if you said that, it's like, it's fine, I can make conversation with little girls. Wait, no. Ooh. I'm afraid I have to stay here, Hazel. Wasn't your mother supposed to be there with you? Mummy! Are you my mummy? She said she had to leave for a little while, but I had to stay put in the kitchen. Oh. I want to go see the pretty ladies and gentlemen dancing. <gasps> You can dance with me if you want, Hazel. I would love to. Oh! I wish I could be as enthusiastic as you about it. Oh. Hazel pleadingly pulls at Silas's arm, staring up at him. <coughs> Pardon me. He grimaces, probably being torn in half by the puppy dog eyes and his sense of duty. I am very sorry, but the young gentleman here is free to enter the ballroom, you know. 
he might be willing to take you. Ah, uh, you sneaky shit. You know I can't refuse. Oh, you conniving bastard. <laughs> yep. The hint of a smirk on his lips makes me wonder if he hadn't planned this from the start. Really? Would you take me, sir? Ah. Oh. Gah! Well, I'd rather not become a permanent villain in the child's mind, so I guess there's no helping it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Shooting a, a venomous gla glare at Silas's Sil Sil beaming face. I shove my half-empty glass at him to hold. Grab Hazel's hand and stalk glumly down the stairs. I'd, I'd, I'd hold her, like, put her hand on my arm like a proper gentleman would, and, like, lead her in. The little girl goes quiet, but her sparkling eyes are full of eagerness. We head down to the lower floor and I lead Hazel over to the huge ballroom doors. From inside, the sound of a fast-paced waltz mingled with many footsteps and peals of laughter reaches my ears. Let's just take a little peek, okay? Hazel enthusiastically nods in reply, so I reach out to pull open one of the doors ever so slightly. He's gonna be on the other side. Arden's gonna be on the other side, just like, Hey, how you doing? It's like, damn it! The dazzling shimmer of numerous swelling dresses first greets my eyes, all but blinding. Ah, oh, you're all so cool. You look like Lumiere from, not Lumiere, Lafou from Beauty and the Beast. I was trying to say Lumiere. A sea of colourful, elegant figures swells across the gleaming floor, waltzing in time with the upbeat music. The light from the chandeliers sparkles and glimmers and moonbeams faintly stream, stream in from the windows on the side. That's what I was trying to say. I was also somehow about to burst into poetry for some reason about to say and the moonbeams kiss the sea and i was like wait this is not a lie this is Percy shelley i can't help but watch the guests graceful movements for a few moments oh what's wrong with me admiring both the statuesque men and the beautifully clad women man those corsets must be tight they make it look awfully pretty i do have to say i suppose dancing isn't a bad thing to spectate Still, there's no way I'd ever enjoy being out there on the floor. Have you ever danced before, Hazel? <gasps> oh my god! Are we gonna dance? Please tell me we're gonna dance together! <gasps> Still watching through the wide crack in the door, I wait for the expected eager reply. Hazel? She's gone. Hazel? She's gone. Where'd she go? She's in... Yeah. That... Oh, I'm not gonna say the little brat. She's gonna jump if I don't find her. Well, my first instinct is to be annoyed. I admit I'm a bit worried about what would happen to the girl if she's found somewhere she's not supposed to be. At an official event, a servant's daughter frolic around in the ballroom is something that would probably warrant punishment for both the girl and her parents. Hazel certainly deserves a stern talking to, but I don't want her to get in trouble. She'd definitely cry. Oh, no crying aloud. I'm getting too soft. This is the last damn time I ever played babysitter. <laughs> I hastily search for Silas in the balcony above, but he's nowhere to be seen. What a bastard of a butler showing responsibility for looking after her on me. Sighing, I reluctantly... Uh, I'm all tongue-tied. I, reluct uh, I reluctantly step inside the ballroom, managing to avoid any undue attention by sticking to the corners. Just pretend your are Joe March and the back of your dress is all starched and burnt, and you're like, ah, no, no, no. Well, not half the guests are engaged in the lively waltz, but with everyone else admiring and ch chatting from the sides. No Hazel over there or over there. Where on earth did she run off to? Remember, look for little things. L little, uh, little things are really hard to miss. Little things with pink. Oh, is that who I think it is? Come to dance with me after all. Oh god, she's here. Oh no, she's found me. This couldn't possibly get any worse. No, no I'm just here to watch, you see. She's coming towards me at an alarming speed. Oh god, she's got all the skates on. Escape route, escape route. Where the hell can I go? Uh, excuse me, miss. I have to take him from you for a moment, I'm afraid. Arden, is that you? Arden, my hero! Just before the ruin reached out to me, a familiar shape steps between us. Oh! oh what a shame. Do come back soon. Go find Kermit. Arden? My hero. Come with me over here for a moment, if you would, my friend. Okay. I'm <laughs> okay, I'm okay. Baffled but relieved, I let Arden drape his arm around my shoulders and guide me in the direction of a relatively quiet corner. I didn't want to run into him either, but if I had to choose the lesser of two evils, it'd probably be Arden. Thanks for that, I suppose. Yeah. I let her alone mutter while we walk, trying not to sound too overly grateful so Arden doesn't take it as a cue to latch onto me more. I did warn you, didn't I? Your being of marriageable age means you're bound to catch the eye of... 
girls like that. <laughs> but more importantly, did you finally change your mind and decide to come dance? No. Don't spout drivel, Arden. I'm looking for a little girl. That's not something we should be saying. He's like, beg your pardon. When we reach the corner, Arden pauses, casting me a curious and maybe slightly suspicious glance. A uh, little girl? Do you have a cousin or something I don't know about? Um. Oh, it's complicated. Either way, I'm guessing you haven't seen her. Arden shakes his head and I let out a sigh. <laughs> well, it's not my problem, I guess. Hazel probably knows her way around here better than I do anyway. You have good timing, though. I think the announcement is about to begin. Huh? Announcement? Oh, the schedule of festivities? Nodding, Arden points to the centre of the ballroom where the numerous couples are starting to drift away in towards the corners, making way for a fancily dressed man with a scroll in his hand. The music dies down gradually and comes to a stop, and the chatter dies down to quiet whispers. Arden keeps his arm hanging around my shoulders, and I find myself too tired to bother sh with showing him off. Well, he's got his arm ar hanging around my shoulders? Ah. Boys, boys, boys. <laughs> Esteemed ladies and gentlemen of the court. Woo! <laughs> Someone boisterous in the crowd just starts going, Woo! Yeah! I really hope he keeps this short and sweet. Is anything in court affairs ever short and sweet? Me. Ha! <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome you to the first day of our gracious Royal Highness's birthday celebration festivities. His Majesty wishes to thank you all for your attendance. No! Oh, yeah! Woo! Why can't his royal birthday boy come out and thank us himself? He's busy having sex. Tomorrow will mark the beginning of the Spring Festival being held in His Majesty's honour. In the morning, the outdoor stores and shops shall open for you, and games shall be hosted for your enjoyment. The festival shall continue for three days. Afterwards, on the fourth and final day of the royal celebration, there shall be a grand masquerade, which all guests are expected to attend. Masquerade! I don't think you'll be able to get out of dancing in that one, Riv. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, <sighs> His Royal Highness hopes his gentle guests enjoy the rest of their time at the castle estate and looks forward to joining you in merriment. Light it up! Now, guests who wish to retire for the night may adjourn to their rooms upstairs. Our gracious maestro has agreed to several more songs for those who would delight in a little more dancing. Woo! No sleep tonight! Sorry, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm one of those people. As delicate applause fills the, 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 the ballroom, I quickly pull away from Arden's grip and clear my throat. <laughs> oh, that's my cue, I'm afraid. Perhaps I'll see you in the morning. Oh, leaving me? Again? You're so horribly mean. Look. Did you have a thigh gap? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I noticed that. Abandoning Arden for the second time this evening, I give him a lazy half bow before turning towards the doors. I wonder if Silas is the one who's supposed to escort, to escort us to our rooms. If so, he's going to get the chewing. He's going to get the chewing out. He's. Oh, I. I, I, I mm. Yeah, I misread. I was going to say he's going to get chewed, and I was like, why are we chewing him? He's going to get the chewing out he really deserves. He's up. As some of the other guests and I return to the main hall, however, we're instead attended by a host of other servants I haven't seen before. Slightly disappointed not to have the chance to punch that butler's face. I thought, <coughs> God, what is wrong with me? I follow along as we're led up another staircase to the second floor where most of the guest accommodation seem to be. And this room is yours, sir. Thank you. My thanks. Thank you. In the hallway, a polite young maid opens the door to what are presumably my chambers for the duration of this celebration. Ooh! She hands me the key before attending to the next guest, so I step inside the room and shut the door behind me with a sigh of relief. Finally! I can take my clothes off! Woo! A moment to breathe! I've forgotten how incredibly exhausting socialising was. It is, isn't it? That's, that's not something to be like proud of. It's like it's super exhausting when people want to talk to you. And just like, oh, fine, I'll say hi. The room before me is a cosy one, illuminated by a few candelabras and the orb and a flicker of the fireplace. 
the magnificent the blah, 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 wow, wow I am tongue tied tonight aren't I the magnificently sized bed looks more than a little inviting as do the plush chairs nearby if I close my eyes and inhale the slightly smoky dusty scent I can practically envision myself back home <sighs> that was an exhale bit <clears throat> oh lord in heaven help us all I wander over to the small doors at the back of the room peering through the glass goodness I even have a little balcony of my own. <gasps> Can we re recreate Romeo and Juliet? Juliet? Yes, I love that. I would love that. Oh wow! I because my ears are blocked, I can't hear myself speak even with my headphones not on. I'm just like no. <sighs> Hang on. <sighs> there we go. That doesn't help. I suppose these guest rooms were probably made with spoiled nobility in mind. You are our spoiled nobility. Pulling the doors open, I step out curiously into the elegant terrace, gazing up at the clear night sky. The wind ruffles through my hair, and I close my eyes for a moment to enjoy the cool sensation washing over me. Three days of a festival, and then a masquerade. Huh. At least you pronounce masquerade, right? As much as I hate to admit it, the festival sounds like it might be rather fun. My parents never felt obliged to take me to any festivals as a little boy, so I always had the sense that I was missing out whenever my friends would talk about them. Fucking, I was wondering what that sound was. I was like, oh, that was an owl. And that masquerade ball. Oh, off. Bird, Jesus, don't fly past my window. You scared me. I thought you were the owl. I mean, the owl was coming to get me. I certainly wasn't informed I need a mask, that's for sure. Thanks, Dad. <sighs> Perhaps I can buy one at the festival. I suppose if I'd had to choose any type to dance to be taken, masquerade seems like the most interesting. Maybe a mask will even let me hide from Arden in that damned one. Ah, the best of both worlds. All right, chill out, Hannah Montana. Smirking to myself, I idly glance over to my left, hearing a faint shuffling noise. Hazel? <gasps> ah! What the? It's an adjoining balcony with the room next to me. Ah. And there's someone over there, leaning against the balustrade. How the hell didn't I know this before? Boys, is it Arden? After my undignified yelp, the shadowy figure on the opposite side of the balcony turns slowly towards me. It better not be far. Oh, oh, nice chin! With the moonlight illuminating his features, I can identify that it's a man. How do you know? Could be a bearded woman, for the slanted shape of his mouth is unmistakably male. Fine. My apologies, sir. I didn't realise uh, we were adjoined neighbours. <laughs> hmm. I'm sorry, I'm still saying it's chin. Instead of an immediate reply, the man takes a slow step towards me, crossing the thin, connecting walkway between our balconies. Oh. Really? There's no need to be angry, sir. I promise I wasn't. Oh. Excuse my rudeness. Oh. Huh. Hello. <laughs> it's just like, um. Alright then. The tall tan man bows lowly before me, lifting his head with a subtle glimmer in his eyes. <clears throat> I just had to be sure it was Lord Verison's son I had the privilege of finally meeting. Um. Alright. Oh, of course. Someone else who only identifies me as my father's son. I straighten up, feeling decidedly less deferential. Well, you're not mistaken. I prefer to be called Rivian rather than Varison's son, however. Mm-hmm. My apologies, Rivian. I already knew your name. But I didn't wish to seem rude by addressing you so... coarsely. You sound like Ron Perlman. I like it. <laughs> oh, well. I suppose that's all right, then. This man is surprisingly polite, and he sounds like Ron Perlman, which is a big 10 out of 10 in my book. Something about his manner and clothing makes me think he's from a different place. Is he a foreigner? It must be an act of fate that you were brought to me so swiftly. You are precisely the one I have been looking for. Uh, we've just met. Oh god, I can hear Clark Carly Rae Jefferson playing in my head. Me? Are you sure you don't mean my father? He's not here, if so. Nah. He shakes his head, lips curling into a cryptic smirk. Who exactly is this man? He gives off a much more dangerous air than your average courtier. I wanted to give you a warning. A hint, if you will. You're sharp, I'm sure. 
with a man like Lord Verison as your father. So I doubt you'll take long to catch on. Um, all right. Ah! What the hell are you talking? <laughs> oh. Before I can so much a struggle, I find myself abruptly turned about, pinned against the ball stream. Hey! Hey now! Hey! You ask for coffee first. No touchy. Staring down at the long falls of the cliffs below. Uh. You think this long celebration is just for the sake of the king's egoism? No. It's something far more than that. Hands off the hips, but they're insured. Yeah, uh, ooh. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, part of me is like, that's the natural response of, what the hell are you doing? But the other part of me is like, I'm listening. I can feel my heart pounding in my chest, but strangely enough, I don't sense any killing intent from this man. I say I sense another intent, but let's not talk about that just yet. I suppose I can hear him out, just in case there's something important I don't know. Since when did diplomacy become so hands-on, though? Ha! Oh, for the love of God! I glimpse the pleased smirk on his face when I slowly relax in the cage of his arms, a sour grimace curling on my own lips. You see, the nobility here are not merely those from your own kingdom. Some of these lords and ladies hail from beyond these borders, myself included. And some of them are former citizens or allies of smaller nations whose armies were crushed under your kingdom's fists. Oh. So? Precisely what the hell does that have to do with me? Uh, not with you, but your father. Oh, okay. Use your pretty head for a moment, little dove. Hey. The man who expertly controlled your force's movements, who knew through spies everything his enemies would do, who outwitted them at every turn. I'm not a dove. I'm a fan tail. The stranger's lips aren't far from my ear and his warm breath tickles lightly against my skin. Ooh! That was oh. your father, Rivian. And now his darling son is far from home, in a nest of enemies among friends. Oh. A shiver runs down my spine, his long, rough fingers tighten around my jaw. Okay, no, no kisses. I already told you I'm not my father. Your overshadowing bloodline may be irksome to you, but it is everything to those who hate Lord Varison. And you're so very vulnerable all alone. If I were one of those enemies, you'd be lying in a picturesque pool of your own blood right now, or smashed into little bitty pieces on those cliffs below. And neither of us want that. Do we? Uh, I particularly don't want that. The low, softly threatening tone of his voice makes my fingers tightly curl into fists and I struggle desperately to not show my growing anxiety. Careful. Quit with your fancy words and tell me what the point of this all is. He chuckles softly, releasing me from the tight embrace. Careful. I need to turn me around and press my back against the bullstrade, staring down at my cool, glittering eyes. Don't push me! Mark my words. Something unpleasant is going to happen very soon within the walls of this fancy resort that all you pretty little nobles are trapped in. Oh, is that? And you, the heir of one of the kingdom's cleverest, most ruthless men, you will find yourself in the middle of it, whether you like it or not. Well, I'll just leave. I'm going. I'm, I'll leave right now. <laughs> that would be my plan. I'm like, I, I, I'm leaving. Beads of cold sweat break out on the nape of my neck as those words sink into my skull. This is the absolute worst nightmare I could have imagined. There's... there's no way he could really be telling the truth, right? Whether no. or not you inherited the sharpness of your father is something we'll all learn by the end of this celebration. Don't you think? Bastard. Based on if I make it to my carriage alive on the final day? <laughs> The tall stranger seems amused when I grind my teeth angrily, but he gives a nod of confirmation. I'd like to ask how you know all this, but you're so full of cryptic drivel that I doubt I get a straight answer. So let me ask you instead. What am I asking? Damn it, I was trying to think of something that sounded cool and collected, but now I'm drawing a blank. What? 
is your name? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did that remind me of Monty Python with that? What is your name? Sir Lancelot. <laughs> what? Sure. What is your favourite colour? Pink. No, blue. Wait. No. Oh god, if I get if he gets the answer wrong, will he just suddenly fly over the cliff? And I'm like, well, that's what I'm about. The man blinks. Well, if I wasn't expecting it, he probably wasn't expecting it either. Soon the pleased expression drifts over his well chiselled features, lips curling in a wolfish grin. Said he. My name. It's Franz, my little lord. At your service. How very German. He reaches out towards my hand, bringing the back of it to his lips. Um, but I quickly pull away and give his chest a, a shove, dodging out of his grasp. No! No kisses! You should be the one to fall off the balcony, perverted bastard. I promise you won't be missed. No. Franz's lips press together mockingly. A theatrical sigh makes his broad chest rise and fall. I'm saying all this, yeah, the way I'm describing it is just like, his chiseled face over his uh, uh, uh. The least you could do is thank me. But I guess the angry kitten act is just your unique way of showing gratitude. Maybe. I'll be returning to my own room then. Unless you're planning on inviting me inside yours. You didn't even buy me coffee! I'd sooner invite in one of these purported assassins who want to leave me in a picturesque pool of my own blood. Oh. Snickering, he lifts his shoulders in an innocent shrug, turning to make his way back towards his side of the battle. Should you need my help, do seek me out. Okay. But remember, I'm only one piece of the puzzle you may need to solve. Um... Hmm. His vague words are accompanied by a faint, unreadable glint in his eyes. With that, he shoves his hands in his pockets and gracefully strides over towards his room's door. And I glare at his back until it disappears. What the hell is happening with this damn place? Ah. Maybe it's just you and me in this together. We've, we've got to do something. I suddenly got a breeze on my back and I was just like, oh. <laughs> Franz? Are you there? No. The warmth and sensation of Franz's fingers curled around my chin still lingers, making me shudder. <sighs> More unsettling, though, are the, last, are the lasting fragments of the words he left behind. I hastily return inside my own chamber, slamming the door, balcony doors shut and locking them, pulling the curtains over the glass. The last thing I want is to wake up with that crazy handsy demon of a man staring at me. Ooh, no, ooh, he's very handsy. Ooh. My mind feels a little numb as I undress and throw my clothes to one side, crawling into the bed and curling up under the covers. I think that Franz was lying to me just for a sport, but I can't really fathom why he'd want to do that to someone he doesn't even know. I could probably shake his words off under normal circumstances, but there have been a couple of things bothering me since earlier. That whispering I had before. For some reason, the fact that I couldn't find the source of it made me feel strangely nervous. Then there's the fact that Hazel slipped off so suddenly. It seemed strange that she wouldn't try to coax me to come with her inside the ballroom, unless she wanted to purposely evade me. But why? And now I'm neighbours with some perverted foreigner. Yeah. Oh, woe is me. It's hardly believable, but if he really was telling the truth, then am I actually in danger? But why? Father would have surely have known the- Oh my god, Dad, did you know? Oh, I'm going to be so angry. Who known who the other guest could be before he sent me here. In that case, was there a reason why he made me attend alone? Would it have been safer? Maybe it's safer for me to be on my own rather than be with my parents. Oh. Is this a sink or swim coming of age ritual for me? Ah. Ah, I don't know, Rivian. I pull my head from under the covers and gaze glumly up at the ceiling. As much as I hate to admit it, I'd rather risk embarrassing myself by taking Fran's words seriously instead of ignoring him, and ending up in a bloody splatter. Blech. Swallowing, I slip out from my bed to make sure my room oh my room's door is locked, pressing my ear to the wood just to see if anyone's lurking outside. But I don't hear anything except the fast beating of my own heart. Which the person on the other side can hear as well, because they're remaining silent and all they can hear is <laughs> I gave up and returned to the plush mattress, crawling back under the sheets. We're going to have a long talk about this, Father. <coughs> Cow, you don't have phones! 
when I make it back home, and I will make it back home, I'll give him a real piece of my mind. Until then, I'll make, sh uh, I'll make sure any would-be assassins learn to fear the name of <gasps> Vivian Varys. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not scared either. I'm not scared either, it's fine. Huh? Ugh. What is that infernal noise? It sounds like someone knocking. Sir? Sir, are you awake? No, come in. Huh? <laughs> Just do the, the Anna thing from Frozen and it's like, uh, I'm awake, I'm awake. Um, it's madam, it's the Queen's coronation. <gasps> oh, I bolt upright, rubbing up my eyes hastily. The coronation! <laughs> That's right. I'm trapped in the castle of death for a so-called celebration. <gasps> the castle of death sounds amazing. Castle of death sounds like a, a really cool rock band. But more importantly, is that his voice? I think it is. I grab a pillow from the bed and hold it in front of my legs for modesty's sake. Then storm over to the door to unlock it and fling it open. No, what? No, I don't just peek around the corner just like, I'm not dressed. You can't come in. Sir, I apologise for- No, you don't. You damned sorry excuse for a butler or manservant or whatever the hell you are. What? He's just meant to be- You shoved that little girl onto me last night. And she ran off before I could do anything. But I doubt your evil heart gives a damn if she gets 30 lashes for going places she's not supposed to. Oh, my, accu my accusation makes Silas blink his expression more curious than the sheepest one I was expecting. But sir, the girl was safe and sound back in the kitchens by the time her mother returned. Perhaps she merely wanted a brief glimpse of the splendor and then went back? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that really where she went? Oh, also, still very naked. Well, it's not like it's my business still. Any first time nanny would feel bad about losing track of their charge. Damn it, I'm a man of noble blood, not a nanny. Well, uh, that's fine then, I suppose. Sorry for yelling at you. I'm sorry, I'm naked. Silas offers me a sly smile, shaking his head with a gentle wave of his hand. There is no need to apologise, sir. I stopped by just to inform you that the festival has started. The first day is often the best, they say, and I would not wish for you to miss out. Also, that's a very small pillow. However, I humbly recommend that you attend the event in more than a pillow. <laughs> the lady should surely appreciate it, but it would be most cold. None of you guys. I don't need you to tell me that, you know. But go on, go and attend to your butler duties. Mm -hmm. I shear him off with my non-pillow. <laughs> Sure, when you hold up pillow, and he's like, Well, alright then. I shear him off with my non pillow holding hand, my face burning a little as I slam the door and retreat back into Damn my room. Damn right, the ladies would appreciate it. Damn Probably straight. That creepy fellow from last night, too. Yep. Tossing the pillow aside, I set about dressing myself, muttering all the while. And meanwhile, at the door of the balcony, the guy's just standing there, just like, Yes, <laughs> this is what I live for. Well, even if there is some kind of foreign death warrant on my head, I'm fairly sure I'll be quite safe in broad daylight. But what if that's what they want me to think? What if broad daylight is actually when I'm most in danger? An assassin could blend into the crowd so easily. Now perhaps I'm just getting a little paranoid. I just have to become one with my xenophobia and stay away from anyone with a- Wow! Okay, wow! Wow! I am- Okay, that should do the trick, eh? Hey, that... Chocolates from Pruivia are just so superb. And the cakes from the Cotarian capital are to die for. Are they? Are they? Are they? Not tried Belgium chocolate then. Also, foreigners tend to have a lot more interesting stories to tell. Bah! I'm hopeless. I'm sorry I can be a raving nationalist. I'm sorry I can't be a raving nationalist like you, father. Oh, I know how you feel, Vivian. So this, this would be a perfect moment for my dad just to be like, what? Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. After I finish getting ready, I head back over to the door and slip into the hallway. That was not my stomach. Was that my stomach? No. <laughs> no, don't you talk about Alright. I suppose I haven't eaten since my snack during the carriage ride last evening. Well, I'm sure they have food in the festival halls. I mean stalls. I wind my way through the corridors and trot down the stairs, returning to the main hall while keeping my eyes peeled for any would-be attackers. It seems, though... 
like most of the guests, have already gone outside. Although, a few are still mulling about in this ridiculously huge foyer. Foyer? Foyer? Foyer. I don't know. I stay on careful lap for that demonic woman too, whose threat rivals any assassin. Maybe she is the assassin. Maybe she keeps the dagger stored in between her boobies. Because that's why I would keep mine. As I sauntered towards the door, I noticed a man with long dark hair leaning by the grand entrance, intently reading a long paper scroll. I'm oh, sorry, I was so focused on him. He's, so, he's, he's beautiful. As in very intently. He looks about as focused on that paper as a starving dog with a bone. My curiosity wins out over my refined upbringing, and I quietly approach behind him to try and sneak a glimpse of whatever's on the scroll. I mean, I just like... Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. Ah! Before I can so much as catch a word, he abruptly spins to face me. Nothing! A pair of hawk-like eyes behind angular glass flip down to bear holes through my face. Nothing! Not again! Um, I was just going to pick some lint off your shoulder, you see. Is that so? Yes! Hi. Your hair's so long. I don't think I've been given such an icy glare since I told my mother she looked fat in one of her e Oh my god! She looked fat in one of her dresses. Ah, <gasps> uh, yes. Headed out to the festival and all that. Just spotted something on that coat of yours. <laughs> Didn't want to embarrass you. <laughs> my, how remarkably thoughtful you are. I don't suppose you're one of the servants trying to masquerade as a nobleman. Ah! What? You mean you don't recognize me? Oh, my very He rolls his eyes at me, pushing up the bridge of his glasses with a light snort. I am a busy man. Why would I bother learning the name of someone who goes around picking lint off of people? <sighs> He's so pretty, but... He... Ooh. I wince. Ah! Oh. This fellow really doesn't pull his punches. More so than me! I guess I've been spoiled from all this random attention I've been getting. There's no way everyone would know my face just because I've been seen around with my old man. I'm Rivian. Varison, that is. Mm hmm. The only response I get in is an impassive stare. Hi. I said I'm, oh, for hell's sake, the son of the old military strategist. Ah, that Varison. God, you're so pretty! Ugh. And by clarification, his eyes finally light up in recognition. Is there really more than one Varison? I think he's mocking me. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? I would have let you pick lint off of me to your heart's content. Tossa. Can you stop with the lint business? I was fibbing, if you must know. Fibbing. Really? You could have fooled me. If I was five years old, perhaps. Ooh. Oh my god, I really want these two to just fight kiss now. Just like, yeah, you want to fight? Yeah, let's go. However, yeah. regardless of how pitiful a liar you may be, His Majesty informed me to thank you for your attendance at the festivities and sends your father his regards. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. His Majesty? Wait, the king told you that directly? Oh no, are you the advisor? Of course. You seem surprised that the Grand Inquisitor would have contact with his employer. I blink. What is the Inquisitor, the head of domestic investigations, doing at a royal celebration? I know what your unsophisticated mind is thinking. Why is the head of domestic investigations at a royal celebration? No. Well, my occupation requires me to be present at such important events. I want to punch you in the face. Well, I can see how he got his job. The Grand Inquisitor, hmm. Linnaeus, was it? Linnaeus, yeah, That's yeah. correct. I see you store some useful information <gasps> in that blonde, nearly empty head of yours. Oh! <laughs> God, talk about unpleasant. Did snooping over his shoulder really warrant this kind of treatment? Clearly, the king tolerates him for his qualities other than his horrible personality. Just out of curiosity, did his majesty tell you to thank every guest like that, or just me? Oh, 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 the bickering, I love it! His nose wrinkles disparagingly at my question, upper lip curling, no doubt, in preparation to offer some kind of caustic response. Many guests are given honorific greetings, but for some unfathomable reason, he asked me specifically to address you. 
<laughs> Maybe the king's trying to ship us. He sounds slightly confused, which is admittedly understandable. I see. I see. For some reason, a strange sense of apprehension flits over me. Why? The king singled out the Grand Inquisitor, one of his highest ranking men, to talk to me. Maybe he does ship us. <gasps> Plot twist. I got it. I got it. Developers of the game. I already got it. I already, the, the king ships us. Beyond that, he investigates domestic affairs. That means if something fishy is going on related to the king or his court, this ponytailed hell beast is on the hunt. I hope he's not assigned to keep an eye on me or something. This one man who I'd rather not get on the bad side of. Incidentally, do you know how many foreign guests the king invited to this extravagant affair? Ten. Specifically, just like, specifically, ten. Linnaeus raises his eyebrows at my question, then narrows his hawk-like gaze at me. There are no more than six, with four of those being ambassadors. All of them equally dislikable, if you ask me. I mean, it takes one to know one. Do you find anyone likable, except for your reflection? Oh! Feel the water, it's scalding! Oh. Perhaps I like you. If you're more like your father and less of a spoiled child. Fight! Fight now! I'm starting to wonder what the sentence is for punching the Grand Inquisitor. Ooh, kiss fight! Ah, your primitive mind is contemplating violence, is it not? I advise you not to raise a hand against me. Not even the Varison name will save you from the consequences. What about a light spanking? With a defeated sigh, I turn to the doors with intent to head off if I end up getting thrown another insult. Do oh, I? before you head off to cause more trouble. Ah, uh, what? I begrudgingly glance over my shoulder to see a smirk on his smug face. If you see that ridiculous boy, Arden, <sighs> is it... Tell him he needs to act like a proper guardsman, or I'll make sure he's relieved of his post. Mm, make sure he's relieved of his You know Arden? Lovely, what on earth did he do now? Uh -huh. Linnaeus waves his hand dismiss dismissively at me, pulling back at the skull he's tucked away when he noticed my presence earlier. Ask him yourself. I have no further time to entertain your dull questioning. Ah, <sighs> you bitch. <laughs> Very well. I'd pull up a chair for you before I left, but sitting down would surely drive the stick bear deep in your rectum to an uncomfortable death. Do have a good morning. Oh, oh, you want a bandage for that, Linus? You want a bandage for that burn? I can feel a murderous glare trained on my back as I hastily make my way out of the castle doors, not wanting to suffer the inevitable retaliation that occur if I stuck around. But as the cool breeze hits my face and I enter into the lavish grounds outside, I breathe a sigh of relief. With luck, I'll never have to run into that unpleasant man again. Oh, just wait. More importantly, I can see the bustling festival so I'm shipping you with him already. More importantly, I can see the bustling festival stalls ahead. But <laughs> Plot twist, I'm the king and I'm hiding behind the curtains just watching them, just like, yes, fight, kiss, do it. And excitement bubbles inside me as I follow the stream of guests heading towards them. I haven't been to a proper, a proper festival in years. Maybe I'll have a chance to get some fun souvenirs and actually relax a little. Perhaps, perhaps the celebration won't be so bad after all. Hello? Oh, is that it? No! Oh! Well, that was the demo of Chest of Blades. That was, that was good. I like that. It made me laugh. I liked it. Ah! <sighs> And I'm not gonna lie, the pretty boys do help. This game, okay, this game is free demo, it's on itch.io. However, the developers do have a Kickstarter. So I'm gonna link you to their page on itch.io and then through there you can go to the Kickstarter. And I think I like this game, please support this game. It's a nice game, I like this game. I enjoy it. I enjoy it very much, thank you. <sighs> um, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm all boyed out, I'm just gonna sigh. <sighs> anyway guys, thank you very much, and if you want to see more games played like this, if you want to see more games like this for me to be played, if I could word correctly, that'd be great. And that's it for Chess of Blades. <sighs> I'll see you all in the next video for the LGBTQ series. I'm just gonna stare into his eyes because they're beautiful.
Bye-bye.